very much. Uh, this is Jerry Sweeney's Mammy. I'll read the title poem in a minute, which will explain all that. I'm going to read the poem at the very back. It's called Now We Is Sixty. I was teaching year seven, and I went in and I uh, double class two hours. And uh, as usual, I was left with no work. So you got to wing it. Two hours of uh, making it up. So I said to him, OK, guys, uh, uh, what were you doing yesterday? And nobody said anything. They're all quite like you are there. Then one little nerd at the back of the class said, please, sir, the spinach armada. And I said, right, the spinach armada. <laughs> and I thought, right, what were you doing the day before that? Total silence again, little nerd at the back. Please, sir, Anne of Cleavage. And I thought, right, I'm going to leave that there. And uh, so I went into year eight, and I was uh, teaching Pythagoras. So, you know, uh, so as you can see, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square. Sorry, yes? They say, oh, ar, what is that Pythagoras' theorem? And everybody start doing a pirate voice to me. And I thought, I thought it must be my hearing. And uh, we were miles away from National Pirates Day. It, uh, I thought it might be National Crying Day, because I always turn up for that. And uh, so I thought, oh, well, if that's what they're going to do, I'm going to join in. So I went back and I said, oh, ar, the sails on the good ship Hypotenuse are equal to some of the sails on the other two ships. <laughs> And this is how this poem came about. Now we are 60. I was approaching my 60th year and I thought, wouldn't it be funny to do a book of me at 60, 16, 7? And that was the aim of the book. Um, that came in, totally changed the whole tenor of the book. So, now we are 60. A year 8 child inquires, how old I be? I be just 60. He gasps, my god, you're very active for 60. <laughs> 60 is a distant planet, somewhere in a galaxy far, far from here. Yea, another dimension. I practice my 60-year-old smile, perfected by now. I, uh, I am starlight that will only reach him when he himself is 60, if he ever remembers what he has long ago forgotten. Thank you. Jerry Sweeney's mammy. Uh, when I was five, I knew nothing of the basic facts of life. I thought the birds and the bees were about the birds and the bees. And uh, I didn't know where we... And we knew all our birth stories. I knew that I was two pounds when I was born. I knew that Blobby, my sister, was less than two pounds when she was born. Deirdre was born with the cord around her neck. Oh, nearly strangled. Uh, they all had birth stories like that, but we didn't know how babies were made or anything like that. So, my, I was under the illusion or the, 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 the delusion that uh, a chap could have three mammies. Because I thought the definition of a mammy wasn't a biological one, it was an emotional one. And I thought anybody that loved you to that great nth degree must be a mammy. So I had my own lovely mother, Rita Dempsey. I had Mrs. Sweeney down the road. And I had my Auntie Mary down in Cork. So I thought, hey, you know. And by that definition alone, my dad was the best mammy I ever had. Uh, so my mother had to take me aside and tell me that Mrs. Sweeney wasn't my mammy. So that's why it's called Jerry Sweeney's Mammy. Mrs. Sweeney was Jerry Sweeney's mammy. Huh? And even though I had my own, I had her alone. It was like having a spare mammy. And even when she was mad with us, ah, oh, she just couldn't be mad with us. Go on, go on, Michelle. You'd wear the heart out of a stone. And if you fell and you were crying, heart and knee badly grazed or badly bitten by a bee. She would hug you up with all of herself. Ah, come here to me, you poor little dose. Wrap you up in so much love it would last for years. For years. Jerry Sweeney was my best friend ever. Still is. Nothing's changed. Except that us young fellas uh, have become our fellas who still think they're young fellas. And every time I see him, I could almost cry. I can still see his mammy smiling out of his eyes. Thank you. Uh, Anne, for, I showed uh, Anne some videos so she gets some idea of what I was like. And she wanted the singing ones. I can't sing all together. So I, for those bits, I bought some earplugs if anybody wants to buy them. <laughs> Earplugs, they're only five for each, so <laughs> for cheap. Otherwise, you'll have to listen to me. So, this is called Sing in the River. The person who made me who I was was my uncle Michael. My dad gave me the great love of song and story. 
I'm dyslexic, everything had to come in by the ears, everything had to be spoken. There's a whole lot of text that I don't know. My sister used to do Eugene Fields' Victorian cringe wordy poem now about the little boy blue, child deaths. The little boy blue, um, the little Thai soldier is covered with dust by still by his post, he stands. And don't you come till I move, or uh, till I come, he said. And he goes and he dies. And the ties still stay there waiting for the little boy blue. It's a killer altogether. And my, the only time I heard that was my sister's breath on my cheek, moving my curls with the words. And I never saw it written down for 40 years. And I opened up a book and I started crying. There was that poem. So some poems don't have a text. They're a real life human breath. So this is called Sing in the River. Uncle Michael was the one who not only gave me a love of it, but he created things, he met things. It was like taking a walk with René Magritte or Salvador Dali. He'd make up total. My aunt used to always say to him, you stop filling the child's head with nonsense. Can't you see he believes everything you say? And I did, I did. And he was a gorgeous man. So this is, uh, we're walking down to a pool that we've got to date. And, uh, and uh, there's a famous song called Carrick Down, you'll hear that too. It's called Sing in the River. So this is what it was like to walk with my car. Walking with my uncle was never the ordinary process of perambulation to get from point A to point C. We would sing our way west into the field as if to tame it, soothe it with sound. On carried down, the heat was brown, we'd sing to it. The clouds are dark, or on lee, the grass listening with its thousand ears, and the field would swoon and fall down to the river at its border which, as it happened, was the real-life river in the song. They kissed the slumbering on a bree, as if he had sung it into existence, and we would roll ourselves down over and over until we arrived at its dizzy waters, dangling our toes in pure song. And now, with a quick uncle wink, let's walk home backwards. And backwards home we'd go, just for the laugh of it, the yes of it. Confusing cows and a few scattered clouds, trees and hedges tiptoeing away from us. The five bar gate with the sweetest, wildest strawberries at its feet, proclaiming, Is it Magyar or what? And the next day, off we'd go walking, eyes closed in the darkness of our own making, to sing the song to the river, the river chuckling over stones to itself. And the next day, walking, we'd be walking backwards with eyes closed, led along by our own laughter and the odd mystified room. Farewell, we tell the sleepy river. Farewell, leaving it dreaming in the sunset. Shh, shush the footsteps. Shh, walking backwards. And Donald swore, I or I or, he part no more. A stone a cree. Shh. Thank you. When the with the sure of Sota, the draught of March had passed to the Rota, and bad at every vine and switch liqueur, of which were two and jondred, is the floor. When Zafra said with a sweat of bread, in spirit had in every halt and hurt, the tender crocus and the younger son had in the ram as half a course he run and smaller fowls lack in melody, had slept in all the nick with open eye. So pricked him the tour in her courages, than London folk to go on pilgrimages. So beginneth the book of the Tales of Canterbury, and so too begins my poem, which is called So Pricket Hem the Tour in Her Courages. Uh, which means when nature, when spring comes, uh, whether you're boy, girl, flower, tree, nature's going to make you do what you got to do. Which in my case was reading for the end. Never did help my da enough. Always head stuck in a book. Donald, son, he called. Can you hold this while I saw? Ah, oh, died well. Me lost in Chaucer in his tail. And so the saw saws, but all I see is, yo, the miller was a chap of sixteen stone, a great stout full of big and brown and bone. The saw cuts through the afternoon, pauses, then Chaucer's on again. He did well out of it, for he could go and win the ram at any wrestling show. Say what? Oh, don't get me wrong, I adore the aesthetic beauty of sawdust flowing, floating uh, 
in a universe of its own, surrounded by sunlight and shadow. The smell of pine kidnapped my mind, the dance of the bubble in a spirit level. Didn't have time for all that hammering and sawing. I was a boy on a mission ever since our teacher sighing, Oh, I don't know why I teach you scruff shaw, sir. You'll never read the book. But by the weekend, furious at the rebuff, I ha ha had my poor old dad getting only begrudging help. On that apron, the words falling like gentle rain upon my mind, with his surest sota, the draught of March, words, words, oh sweet words, had passed it to the rota. My mind bathed at every vine and switch liqueur. The bubble in the spirit level poised perfectly, perfectly poised, of which for two on John Ridd is the floor. Thank you. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, we go to another book. This is called uh, The Smell of Purple. Uh, we launched this in New Delhi, of all places, about five years ago. And it's about me growing up uh, under the tutelage of my little girl. And she came in one day and she announced that she could smell purple, yellow. Blue when I was gone. Ah, oh, fantastic! What does yellow smell like? What does blue? She was only a three-year-old girl, so this is what she told me. The smell of purple. She says she can smell yellow. She says she can smell blue, despite not being able to spell either color. Yellow smells the same as blue, like a wet kitty drying by the fire. Red smells like mummy when she kisses. Her kisses smell different when she kisses you. Then she smells like flames with little orange tips. Purple is my favorite smell. It smells just like a magic spell. I kiss her goodnight like lilac, only lighter. The little flecks of purple scattered here and there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is called Mr. Daddy Soft Soft. Always her fascination with me shaving. This her early morning ritual, observing each action as if it were holy. I hide my face in foam. Santa Claus, Santa Claus, she chants. Winces with delight as the razor. <gasps> she gulps, goes over my bump without <gasps> slicing it off. The shaving uncovers the me she knows. Soft, soft, Mr. Daddy, soft, soft, she gurgles in a ladder of laughter. Me now, me now, she pleads at me. I take the brush, coat her reflection with foam. I shave her with the tip of my little finger. Her reflection sniggers and she sniggers too. Later in the early evening she appears, bearded in fresh cream. She shaves herself with a lollipop stick. Me daddy now, see? I cha 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 her on the tips of my toes as she clings to my fingertips. The living room dances around us. One delighted half-shaved little girl, one delighted soft, soft Mr. Dad. Oh. Uh, this is still Tilly. This is called, uh, I feel pretty. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> Tilly would uh, come into her bed in the early hours of the morning. We'd been at a cocktail party, darling, and we were very hungover. And Tilly, regardless of this fact, was still going to bomb into her bed and jump upon us and land in all the soft male and female parts that her mother and father would uh, declare to be themselves. Uh, um, this is called Life for Pretty. Oh, so pretty. I uh, wake, covered in glorious glitter. Smelling strongly of PVA glue sticking to my cheek, very hung over, and covered in blue, orange, yellow, red feathers. A bubble recently blown perched upon my nose. I still have comatose. Tiny bubbles travel amongst my curls, as through a bigger bubble brightly nestling neatly over my right eye, I observe my tiny daughter purse her lips and kiss more bubbles into being. Ellie. I force my lips, still frozen in sleep, to somehow speak what you do. See, even my syntax and sentence structuring is shot. She smiles sweetly, 
I'm pretty. Yeah. <laughs> is called I is smiling. Everything always is I is. As in I is happy. I is not go bed. Even to, to negate it is I is not tired. <laughs> I is not going to bed with Churchillian scowl and foot stamp, stamp for emphasis. I used to love her construction the simple syntax of her sentences. Tell you your mummy is girl? Donald, Donald is not girl? Now I is remembering you, just as you was. Recall your words just as they is. And I, I is smiling. Thank you. Ah. Now we finish with this one. Uh, another single one for Anne. Uh, my wife and I long to have a child. And Although we had great fun practicing, we had no child that yet emerged. We had test after the test, the test, and we had one last um, test to do, probably too much information, Heather, and see whether the fallopian tubes were clear. Um, that got cancelled, got cancelled, six months, six months, and we fell pregnant. Notice I used the royal weed there. And uh, so we were pregnant, I used to, she was finished, I used to sleep down by her belly, and I'd sing songs of the unborn baby, and I'd... Uh, didn't know much Irish, so the patchwork quilted all together, and we come out with this one. It's called Askelga. I translate as I go along. Doon the Sula, close your eyes. Cuddle galaw ma grossive. Sleep until day, my gentle love. Cuddle gasolve gossive. Sleep peacefully, gently. I wrote and gyalak is rocky and green shafi. This moon will rise, this sun will set. Arag is grawy gony. Gokiha is goklaw, goklaw is gokiha. Every night, every day, every day, every night. Ma plurin, ma storin, ma morin. My little flower, my little treasure, my little darling. Akanish, but now. Kudal gasov gasiv. Sleep peacefully, gently. Tofonya and lay until the end of day. The misha and the tave. With me by your side. Losing our baby late into the night, holding this little thing that only attempted to be human. Unable to let go, I clasped the fetus tightly in my hand and buried it in the dawn of our local park under a recently planted red rose bush. In my grief, flower and baby became one, and night after night I climbed over high railings and even higher stars to talk to her in the dark in Irish or sing, my love is like a red, red rose, or cry, cry. Almost got arrested one night by an Irish cop drawn to the sound of Irish emerging from darkness. Guess he let me go because it wouldn't look good on the charge sheet. The defendant was talking and crying to a flower in Irish. Eisht, eisht, listen, listen. Dine egin e kina, someone is crying in a darkasam. In his darkness. Fill, fill a runo, oh, fill a runo is not in me home. Fill a run a cushless door. Mischief to a glow. 